Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Derber with my wife, Alberta Derber, and we're just delighted to be able to share with you in the truths of God's Word once again. Luke 1 37 says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Right. And it is wonderful Wednesday. We are in wintertime. Yeah. December 23rd. Wonderful winter. And I still haven't found them gifts. You got them things hid, but there's nothing hidden that shall not be exactly. revealed. Me and Simon, we're going to find it. You're going to be disappointed if you keep saying No, that. I know you, that I old trick. I already gave you so many of your Christmas gifts. I know gifts. that old trick. Yeah. Old and then all of a sudden, trick. surprise. <laughs> no. I know that trick. But uh, we're glad you're able to join <laughs> join us at this special Christmas time. Merry, yes. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. You know, uh, uh, and a happy Happy New Year. And just want to uh, remind you or inform you, whatever the case may be, about the gathering of the prophets. We've been doing this, I don't know how many years did you say now. say warn us? Warn them? Did I say warn? You did. Why would I you I said warn inform. them? I said warn. Well, we will warn you too. <laughs> about gathering of the prophets, January 3rd through the 8th. And uh, we have... Uh, Dr. Fisher coming in. We got Pastor Philip Thornton coming in. We have uh, Pastor Jonathan Anderson coming in. Pastor Danny Akers coming in. Apostle Terry Matthews coming in. Uh, that's who we know of that are all going to be ministering. And uh, it's just going to be a time when you give, uh, we're giving God the first fruits of the year. Yeah. We're giving him that week. And we've done that. And God always shows up. The RVN band will be ministering in praise and worship every night. Uh, turn, uh, of course, uh, Brother Terry Matthews loose. And uh, Jay Air will be there. And the RVN band will get cranked up and whatever. You know, we just go with the flow of the Holy Ghost and and just, uh, just be a powerful time. Yeah. And if uh, you want to join us, get in those meetings. Uh, there's seven o'clock each night other than Sunday morning we'll kick off at 1030 on the third and then at seven o'clock each night Monday through Friday and then Tuesday through Friday at 1030 in the yeah. morning uh, we're having morning sessions there's not uh, there won't be any praise and worship or whatever but uh, and as far as I know right now I'm going to be speaking in them that's subject to change and so uh, we're just going to dive into 2021. God spoke to me time. and said it's the year of judgment. Good for the believer, severe for the wicked. The gavel of And this heaven. is still 2020 oh, yeah. vision manifestation. And you carry that right into 2021, just like the year of visitation, the year of, of, of things being revealed, on and on and on. You carry that. You, you, you don't. It's just like uh, you got a birthday coming up. Well, you don't you don't get rid of all the other birthdays that you had. That's what makes the birthday you're you're about to experience. I, I'll be turning. Old things are passed away. <laughs> old things I'll be are turning. Dead. I'll be turning sixty three uh, next year. The way the way I turn sixty three is I account for all the years previous. It's not, I turn one next year. Right. And a lot of people with the prophetic, they, they, they let go of a word that was given and released, and they don't carry it and add it to their spiritual prophetic portfolio and carry it forward into uh, the, the next year. I'm, but anyway, I'm hearing the Lord just saying, His word will not return unto me void. And those Words of prophecy are words from God. Yeah. They're God's words. And he said, I just heard him saying, his word will not return unto him void. We are going to see vision manifestation. Well, and here it real, is. Real, real. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. And, uh, you know, it's it's this is a very a joyous time right now. season yes. to be born uh, again. If you're and not born to, again, and it's to not. know what God is doing, not how He's doing it, but you no. know He's moving yeah. in our midst. Christmas surprise. Yeah. 
Praise That's exactly Lord. right. All right, okay. December 23rd, hon, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, our scripture verse is Jeremiah 23 and verse 6. This is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. It's in him that we live and move and have our being, Acts 17, 28. This is how important righteousness is to Father God. He gives Jesus the eternal title of the Lord our righteousness. This is not a sideline subject to Father God. It's very much front and center with him. When this world was ended and we, the believers, are living in eternity, Jesus will not just be known as Lord, but the Lord, our righteousness. When we understand that, we will want to know him that way and live righteously now. Jesus is our righteousness, the Bible says. As he is, so are we in this world. 1 John 4, 17. We are as righteous as Jesus. Whoa. That... You know, that, that kind of knocks the wind out of a lot of Christians. Well, that's what I the know. next paragraph says. Oh. <laughs> Please don't run from that truth. Run to it. I know it can be hard to swallow, but don't choke on it. Cut it up into smaller pieces that you can handle and then swallow one at a time. Look into the scriptures concerning righteousness and take a piece here and a piece there. Eventually, you will have a big portion of righteousness understanding down inside of you by which to live. So awake to righteousness and to the Lord our righteousness. You know, as, as we're reading he this, I'm Lord thinking about little Simon when, when we sit down to eat. Here he comes. And, you know, he could just have a big old, eat all his food, a big old dish. <laughs> And, and, and he whines and barks. What and Mama cries. Alberta does, let's say we're eating turkey or chicken or pizza, or, no matter what it is, he exactly. wants what we have up there. Well, he's a little fella. He's 10 pound Yorkie. And he's in his 16th year of existence. And so, uh, you know, you just can't give that little thing anything, right? So Mama Alberta has these uh, little scissors and she takes and she cuts, let's say turkey, she cuts that little turkey up about the size of, of rice. Now watch it. Hmm. Why is she doing that? Because his capacity, if you just threw him- Because he don't chew, he swallows. If you threw him just a big chunk of turkey. He shook it. Yeah, he don't know, right he, down. Couldn't, he couldn't handle that even though he would try. And it would do him more harm than good. And that's what I'm saying in this devotional about righteousness, where it says, as he is in this world, so yeah. are we. Right. You can choke on that because we know Jesus was sinless. We know that he's righteous. We know that he's a, a pure, precious Savior, Redeemer of the world. Mm. But yet, Jesus made him to be sin. Right. That knew no sin. Yes. That you and I could be made the righteousness, the righteousness of, God. of God. Of God. In him. Right. In Christ Jesus. That's why he's known as the Lord, our, our righteousness. Righteousness. My righteousness comes from Jesus. Not that we do. He did it for me. That's right. He became sin for me. He became a curse for right. me. He became sickness for me. He became poverty for me. He became everything of the curse oh my. for me, including including a dead from God spirit. Now, yes. let me explain that. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 <clears throat> that you and I were dead in sins mm -hmm. and trespasses, trespasses and right? Sins, yeah. So uh, a, a person that is dead can't sin. 
I mean, if you're if you're in a funeral <laughs> if you're in a funeral parlor and some a lady's <laughs> purse got stolen, the last person is going to be charged as <laughs> a person laying in the coffin. They don't go, yes, kid. Yeah, he, he dead. They don't pull him out of there. But yet, there. we were dead. God. When it says dead, it was talking about you were spiritually separated from God. From Father God, He is a spirit. And those that worship him or those that are connected to him, those that are joined to him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, when you're a sinner, you're not in truth. So your spirit is dead to God. It's, it's alive. alive. It's alive. But dead It'll God. spend eternity in hell if you don't embrace the truth. Right. Right? And so what happens when, you know, a 14-year drug addict drunk, on 16 July 1988, when I cried out to God, then all the sin that had separated me from God, my dead spirit, it was dead to the things of God. It didn't know, it didn't know God. No. It, it, I didn't acknowledge God. I damned him. Yeah, you did. Sure. And all of a sudden, life came into my spirit that was already alive eternally, but it was damned to hell. Yeah, Jesus. All of a sudden, the God Thank kind you, of life came into my dead spirit as far as dead to God is concerned, but alive to eternity in hell. Jesus. And all of a sudden, I was born again, yeah. and now I'm no longer dead to God. I'm alive to God, and I want you, and I'm dead to hell. Thank you, Lord. Now, I got to live in that. How do I do that? By understanding new creation realities. If 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. What dead. happens when somebody passed away? They're dead. They're dead. Oh, the old man is dead. Behold, all things are become new. What happens when things become new? They're alive. And so what, what gives us life is the righteousness of God. Now, now we are in right standing in front of God. Yes. Right? Yeah. How? Through the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So he is the Lord, our righteousness. So... You know, you've heard the stories, you know, that uh, St. Peter is, is at the gate of heaven. Why should I let you in, right? <laughs> well, you know, uh, Peter, I was, a, I, was, I was good. I was a good person. I, 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 you know, I raised three kids and sent them to college. And, and you know, I went to church, you know, and pretty, pretty much, often. Yeah, and and pretty when often. they needed a new, new roof, you know, I, I, I gave some money to the church, you know, and and, uh, I'm a good you man. know, uh, I'm a good person. Can't let you in. Next person shows up and says, uh, Peter says, well, why should I let you in? Well, you know, uh, why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I uh, thought, I thought yeah. when you die, everybody goes to heaven. That's what everybody says. Everybody told me you rest in peace. You're going to a better place. I mean, why wouldn't you let me in? Can't do it. But then here comes that old drug addict drunk <laughs> that has been set free by the power of Jesus. And St. Peter, I'm making something up now. St. Peter's at the front gate saying, why should I let you in? The Lord is my righteousness. My goodness. You feel that right there? The Lord is my righteousness. The Lord is our righteousness. Boom. Come on in Boom. here. Boom. That, that's the key. Yeah. That's the key. And so, uh, yeah, look, the Bible says scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yeah. Now, you got, you got some sold out bodyguards out there that are they might take a bullet yeah that's right and you got people in the military that have sworn you know that they're going to protect whatever and they would even give up their life and many have right but jesus when we were yet sinners the bible said 
gave his life for us, and not only gave his life. Look, Jesus became sin. Not, he did not become a sinner. I was in a pastor's meeting one time, and one of the uh, we were sitting around a table uh, having a conference, really, uh, a meeting, not a conference as in teaching the word we were just sharing. And this particular minister said, you know, Jesus became a sinner for all of us. I, 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 I reared up in front of them all. I probably sh should have uh, not. He's a little more discretion. Yeah, yeah when I was young, did. I just, but I said, uh, you, Jesus was never a sinner. And you need, you need, I understand what you're trying to say, but yeah. you, you, you cannot teach that. No. Jesus became sin. He took what was in you and I, and he put, he carried it on himself. He Cross. took the penalty of sin. The wages of sin yes. is death. He took that. He did, he, he did not he start sinning no. once he took it. He didn't start stealing and murdering and going out. No, he was on the cross. He took that. So don't ever say that Jesus was a sinner. Dear Jesus. He was never, never. someone that committed sin. No. He took our sin. Oh, my God. And we were never one that committed righteousness. He took his. He gave it to us. That's right. The Lord, our righteousness. Now, this is this is... To, to to your Bible college student, to your seminary student that's not taught this, yeah. it's like, whoa, you know, I don't know about all that. That's why you cut it's it not, up yes. into little pieces. You get in the Word of God, get you an awake to righteousness. And, and the, the, the Bible, Christmas the Bible is so full good. of little cut up pieces of your new creation reality. And you take a little piece here, a little, little piece there, a little piece there, and watch this. You'll start to piece it together. There you go. That's good. You'll start to piece it together, and one day you'll wake up bold. And you'll say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Lord's my righteousness. And I'm telling you what, it's a game changer. Come on. Sure is. You start... Anyone, anyone can put on a Christian T-shirt and have a cross hanging around their neck. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. But if you're going to do that, you ought to have the reality That's of it. That's what that T-shirt says and what that cross means uh, as far as walking in your new creation reality. It says, this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord, Lord our, our righteousness. righteousness. This is Jeremiah <laughs> prophesying about the one to come. Right. It says his name whereby he shall, shall be, be called. called. That he is called. Yeah, but now he is. Now he is. He has become that. He has become. That prophecy has been yeah. fulfilled. He's the Lord our righteousness. So uh, when... Somebody says, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What are they saying? The Lord is my righteousness. Every, it's in him that we live and move and have our being. Well, you know, people, we're, we're doing this because we just so much, well, God so much wants his people to know this. He, he has such a great life for you. And until you know this, you can't live that great life. I mean, really, you're, you're held captive to a lifestyle that's from hell. Well, you got to receive it. Romans 5, exactly. 17 says, uh, those that receive abundance of grace the and gift. the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. That's the thing. You have to receive it because, you know, By faith. Yeah, people say, have said to us years ago, you know, they committed the unforgivable sin. Unpardonable. Unpardonable sin. I said, are you born again? Yeah. Well, you can't, that, that's, 
not receiving it right. is the unforgivable sin. God can't do anything. He can't pardon he you. He can't pardon you. He can't do anything. Can't if, you like, don't, if you don't take if you don't take the way of escape, if you don't take what Jesus has provided. You know, just take it, you know, just take it and and you'll learn from that you know, moment on. Uh, General Flynn just got pardoned by the president for something he, he didn't did. he didn't do. But anyways, that's beside the point. When a pardon comes, it, it, it no charges can be filed now. No. None. And so the unpardonable which you brought up uh -huh. is you and I Every person on the planet has been pardoned, mm -hmm. but you got to receive you it. You got to receive it. Otherwise, baby, and that you're going is the down unpardonable uh, instead of sin. Right. You are blaspheming the Holy Ghost by pushing off His conviction that's saying you need Jesus as your Savior, and you you, you push that off. You push that off. You push that off. That is the unpardonable. You know, uh, uh, a lot of times we'll ask somebody, you know, would you like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And they'll say, no, I'm good. I'm good. No, <laughs> you're not good. There's none good but God. Yeah. And you're not good until you well, receive him. The reason, no, I'm good. The reason a lot of people say that is because they think they have, have to, to give, give up, up everything. all their fun. I ain't finished, I ain't finished having my fun. You know, I, I've, I've, I, some people have gone as far as saying, you know, oh, well, you know, I'm going to have my fun, and then right before I die, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give my life to the Lord. Or I'm glad, well, I'm we glad you know the day yeah. you're going to die. <laughs> I've led people to the Lord on their deathbed, on their deathbed. and they, they were grateful. They were grateful, but if, if they had to do it all over again, they would have accepted Jesus way long time ago. See, and and uh, we're not, you know, the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. But when you get born again, you're made righteous. Yeah. That when it says there's there's none righteous, no, not one, it's talking about before you accept the Lord, right? Our righteousness, and when you accept Him, you become. And you are righteous. Righteous. You are as. as Righteous as Jesus. And that may be a hard gospel, gospel. to swallow. But if you'll, if you'll uh, take, you know, if, if you're struggling with that, but you find it interesting, go back through these uh, teachings that we have and listen. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, in line with what day it is. Just go back and listen to these uh, devotionals being expounded. Ask God there you go. to reveal That's exactly uh, right. this righteousness truth to you. Mm -hmm. It says here in Romans chapter 1 that righteousness is revealed to the believer by faith. Now, I remember when, when I first discovered this, I struggled with it. But it says here in Romans 1, 16 and 17, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God yeah, it is. unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. How? From faith to faith, as is written, the just shall live by faith. So what is going to help you grab and receive this powerful truth of righteousness is where are you in your faith walk? Where are you as far as believing you receive? Yeah. And so this is a righteousness which is a faith. Romans chapter 10 lets us know that. That uh, if, you don't, if you're not being taught the law of faith, if you're not being taught how to actually use your faith, speak faith, put action to your faith, yeah. to hear faith, to feed your faith, then righteousness will always be a distant want to instead of a reality. Yeah. Well, you, you'll just want 
I shouldn't say want to, it's just a someday uh, maybe thing instead of a reality that it's right there inside of you. Yes. You are, you are already that. You just don't know it. See? Just like a child doesn't know they have a heart, they have a stomach, they have lungs. But as they grow older, they find out, hey, that's, uh, that stuff's inside me. Exactly. It's, it's there. It's what's giving me life. Same thing with your new creation reality. As you grow in God, you'll find out, wait a minute, that's what's inside of me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and the Lord is our righteousness. It's Christmas real close, and our time has gotten away from us on this wonderful Wednesday. Don't eat too many peanut butter balls. Oh, here you are again. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, <laughs> verse 4 says this, Where the word of a king is, there, there is power. power. You be a blessing. Join us for the 2021 Gathering of the Prophets, January 3rd through 8th at Faith Victory Church with speakers, Apostle Philip D. Derber. God does not fail. And nobody that believes God and acts with God and agrees with God and walks in obedience to the laws of the kingdom can fail either. Dr. Ron Fisher. It's time to stretch. It's, 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 time to, it's time to move out in what God has spoken to you. Dr. Philip Thorpe. God's at work. The Holy Ghost is at work from China to the United States, from Canada to Australia. God is working and there's not a man that can turn this thing back. Pastor Jonathan Anderson. You and I got to get with him on his time. Now, if you and I would get with him in his time, it'll be our time at the same time as his time and Pastor Danny Akers. God is able to give us what we need to unlock what we need so that we see what we've never seen before. Apostle Derber will also be hosting special daytime sessions Tuesday through Friday. Special music by Jay Ayer, RVN Band, and Terry Matthews. Things are gonna get better than they've ever been before cause god is about to turn some things around for more information go to www.faithvictorychurch.us or give us a call at 502-875-7886